This improper integral brings up some really interesting issues. Uh, first off, it's improper because I have a vertical asymptote on the interval of integration. So this function is spiking to negative infinity and positive infinity when I cross over x equals 1, which is my problematic point. Now, at first glance, um, I saw this function, and I was thinking, well, that's like something that dives to negative infinity on one side and infinity on the other. And then I realized, well, the interval that I'm integrating over is symmetric to the left and right of that asymptote. So shouldn't this thing give me a value of 0? So my first thought, if I formalize that a little bit, was to go like this, let u equal x minus 1. This is basically just a way of shifting the origin. Then du is equal to dx. When x equals 0, u equals negative 1. When x equals 2, u equals 1. And you can rewrite the integral like this, the integral from negative 1 to 1, of 1 over u cubed du. And I said, aha, that's an odd function integrated on an interval symmetric about the origin, so it must turn out to be 0. And in a sense, it actually does turn out to be 0. But this is a special type of integral called the Cauchy principal value. Which is something we wouldn't ordinarily discuss in introductory calculus. And it's a way of putting a value on an improper integral like this, where it's sort of each half of it is divergent, but when you put them together, you get a finite number. So this is kind of the real right answer. But the way that I showed the reasoning is not exactly correct, because the fundamental theorem of calculus shouldn't work with infinities. So I'll just leave this hanging and say, if you want to learn more about how you formally analyze this integral, you have to phrase it as a limit using this Cauchy principal value idea. So let's look at our more traditional approach in introductory calculus. The idea is that x equals 1 is my problematic point, and I need to break my integration interval at that point. So I'm going to break it at 1. And this is still not quite right, because I'm going to have an infinite integrand at that problematic point. And so what you do is you work around it by rephrasing as a limit. So I'm going to call this the limit as t goes to 1 from the left, integral from 0 to t, dx over x minus 1 cubed plus the limit as t goes to 1 from the right, integral from t to 2 dx over x minus 1 cubed. And then I just guess the antiderivative. So I have limit as t goes to 1 from the left antiderivative of this thing that's just x minus 1 to the negative 3 so I get x minus 1 to the negative 2 divided by negative 2 that's evaluated from 0 to t and I have another one of those limit as t goes to 1 from the right negative 1 over 2 times the quantity x minus 1 squared from t to 2. OK. Then I evaluate across the limits of integration. And it gives me a negative 1 over 2 times the quantity t minus 1 squared plus, that's a double negative, the thing I get when I substitute 0 for x, I end up with negative 1 squared, that's just 1, so negative 1 over 2 times 1, or negative 1 half. Plus the limit as t goes to 1 from the right, 
uh, plug in the upper limit of 2. When I plug in x equals 2, 2 minus 1 squared is just 1. So I end up with a, a negative 1 half out of this. And I just realized I messed up my one half from the first integral. I was subtracting that lower limit, and it was a negative quantity, so I should have got a positive. Then I get plus the thing that I get when I plug in t for x. So it's going to be 1 over 2 times t minus 1 squared. And so I end up with um, the one-halves can come out of the limits because they're just constants. And I end up with a positive one-half and a negative one-half. So those are gone. I end up with two limits that go to infinity. All right, so as t approaches 1 from the left, the denominator is always going to be positive because that term is squared, and I end up with basically division by zero, which is going to give me infinity, but it's negative. Second limit. It's going to be the same thing. But without the minus sign, so it's positive. And so at this point, what we're trained to do in introductory calc is to just say if either one of these limits diverges to plus or minus infinity, then we have to say the integral is divergent. But it's a little deeper than that in this problem. The negative infinity plus infinity is ambiguous. I don't know if that adds up to something infinite or finite. And if it's finite, I don't know what number it is. So the way to get clarity on it is to reformulate the way that we're taking this limit using the idea of a Cauchy principal value which is beyond the scope of introductory calculus. And it does turn out the real answer is zero, just like our geometric intuition told us. But the, the official answer for Calc 2 is to say it diverges. In other words, we don't have the tools to deal with negative infinity plus infinity yet.